Hi everyone, welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today we're going to be doing an overview of this Gigabyte Z68 XP UD3 motherboard featuring the 1155 socket and the Z68 chipset. So for starters, let's take a closer look at the outside of the box. Uh, we have this big indicator here showing that we have an M SATA connector that's on board and I'll show you that once I get it out of the box, especially for use with the Intel Smart Response technology, which is also indicated right here, which gives you much, much, much faster hard drive slash SSD performance if you use an SSD and a hard drive together, and that's enabled by the Z68 chipset. Uh, moving right along, we have a Touch BIOS. It's, this is a hybrid EFI BIOS, so EFI slash BIOS, uh, which enables things like using your mouse within the BIOS, as well as booting from hard drives larger than 2.2 terabytes. Uh, as mentioned, this supports the 1155 socket, which is Intel second generation core processors, also known as Sandy Bridge, and also features the Z68 chipset, of course. Uh, this, the Z68 chipset allows you to use the integrated GPU in your Sandy Bridge processor, and you can use the Virtue technology by, uh, by Lucid Logix, <laughs> which is some software that allows you to use the, both the discrete GPU that you add on, as well as the iGPU that's part of your Sandy Bridge processor. Uh, we also have support for two-way NVIDIA SLI as well as two-way AMD Crossfire X if you're going to be using more than one video card, you can use two. Uh, also, we have a three-year warranty in the USA and Canada. Gigabyte is offering this probably because this is one of their ultra-durable three uh, motherboards which features stuff like twice the copper in the PCB and high-quality caps, MOSFETs, and ferret core chokes. Uh, let's go back down this way so we can point out that there is an HDMI port on the board that support Dolby HD home theater that has a 108 decibel signal to noise ratio uh, sound card speci specifically works well with Blu-ray also has a dual BIOS that will allow you to flash your BIOS without having to worry about uh, bricking your board um, if you have a power outage or something while you're doing that you can switch back and forth between two BIOSes so you have a backup and again that's EFI so that will allow you to boot from big old hard drives if you're trying to boot from a large mechanical hard drive. Uh, then more information over here, as mentioned back there, about their high quality caps, MOSFETs, and chokes. And that about does it for the outside of the box. Uh, next up, let's take a look at the included accessories. Uh, like all motherboards, you will get an input-output shield. This one is black and has some clearly labeled color-coded indicators for all your input and outputs on the back. We have a two-way SLI bridge, and that is if you're using two NVIDIA cards. If you're going to go with a Crossfire solution, you will get a bridge along with your Crossfire-enabled video card from AMD. Uh, here we have a couple serial, I'm sorry, four total serial ATA cables. Uh, these are serial ATA or Vision 3 compatible. 6 gigabit per second, and two of them have L brackets on one end. We have a couple stickers we must show you. Uh, there'll be HD home theater sticker and a gigabyte sticker to put on the outside of your case, if you like stickers on your case. Uh, we have, of course, the all-important motherboard manual, and we have the motherboard driver and software installation CD. Usually best to download the latest drivers for this motherboard from the gigabyte website, but make sure to keep this on hand, especially if for example, Windows does not automatically rec recognize your network interface card. Uh, some more documentation here, just indicating this is a socket 1155 motherboard, not socket 1156. That is uh, Sandy Bridge socket, Intel second generation core processors. Just make sure you get the newer processor and not the older one. Otherwise, you'll be in for an RMA. Uh, we also have a Gigabyte SSD uh, Smart Response Technology Guide uh, for those of you who are going to go with a Smart Response Technology setup using a SSD to cache your data from your mechanical hard drive, uh, which is quite effective, I might add. Uh, also, we have a Gigabyte Multilingual Installation Guide for those of you who don't speak English as your first language or read English or that sort of thing. And finally, we have the motherboard itself. Let me just get it out of the anti-static bag and we will go over it in detail. And here's a look at the motherboard. Starting with the back, we can see we have a all blue PCB and our Z68 heatsink is mounted with a couple Phillips head spring mounted screws. So you can remove that if it becomes necessary. And uh, let's move back around here to the front. Where you can see sort of a blue, white, and gray overall scheme for the board. Uh, right in here in the middle, you can see the M SATA port, and I'm going to come back to that at the end to sort of give you guys an idea of how that works and what it's there for. But uh, for a detailed overview, we'll start down here at the bottom right corner, and here right away we can see there's a 4-pin PWM controlled system fan header, so you can plug in a system fan right there. 
Uh, below that, we can see our front panel headers. They're all color-coded. There's a little uh, schematic right down there below as well, so you can tell what to plug in where. Next to that is a TPM header port. Next to that is a blue serial, I'm sorry, USB 3.0 front panel header. You can plug that into your case's front panel USB 3.0 ports if it has a motherboard header for it. Next to that, we have one, two, three USB 2.0 front panel ports. Again, you can route your front panel USB 2 header uh, port uh, header jack to those ports to enable your US USB 2.0 front panel plugs. <laughs> next to that, we have a COM port. That's white right there. We have next to that we have a FireWire 1394 port. And finally, over on the far left, that green port is your uh, front panel audio to enable your front panel mic and headphone jacks. Uh, next up, let's talk a little bit about our PCI Express area. We can see the white ports here are PCI Express single speed ports, and there's one, two, three of those slots there on the motherboard. Uh, in between those, we have a 16 speed PCI Express slot. This one is fully wired for 16 speed. That's where you want to plug in your graphics card. This one down here in the bottom is an 8 speed PCI Express port, and if you're using video cards in both of those ports for two way crossfire or SLI, uh, they will both run at 8 speed. Finally, down here at the bottom, we have two legacy PCI slots for your legacy PCI devices. Uh, moving on, over here on the right, we have our Z68 chipset heatsink, and that is gray. It has a nice gigabyte logo right there on it. And that Z68 chipset controls our serial ATA ports over here. There are six, I'm sorry, there are eight total serial ATA ports. The light blue ones over here on the far left are Serial ATA Revision 2. Those are controlled by the Z68 chipset. And I took this sticker off already. Whoops. I took this sticker off already, but this is an important sticker because of that little M SATA port that uh, I showed you right in the middle of the board. Basically, if you're using that M SATA port, bear in mind that your Serial ATA 2 port 5 will be disabled because it will be rerouted over to that M SATA port. But bearing that in mind, we, also, we have four total Serial ATA Revision 2, 3 gigabit per second ports. We have two Serial ATA Revision 3, 6 gigabit per second ports. All six of those are controlled by the Z68 chipset. Over here on the right side, we have a couple extra Serial ATA Revision 3, 6 gigabit per second ports. These are controlled by an add-on Marvell 88SE9172 chip. So uh, in total, you have four SATA 3 gigabit per second ports and four SATA 6 gigabit per second ports. Moving up the side of the board, over here on the right, we have our 24-pin motherboard power connector that you route from your power supply. Above that, we have another case fan header. That's a three-pin header. And then next to that, we have our uh, DIMM slots. And these DIMM slots are for 1.5-volt DDR3 DIMMs, supporting up to 32 gigabytes total system memory. And uh, it supports DDR3 overclock speeds of up to 2,133 megahertz. Uh, again, you can have up to 32 gigs, and that is if you can find 8 gig modules. Uh, but bear in mind that you do want to set up dual channel memory with this, so you will want to buy sticks, uh, dims, memory dims in sets of two. Uh, next to that, we have our 1155 socket. That is for Intel Sandy Bridge CPUs. Uh, above that, we have our CPU fan, 4-pin header. You want to route that over to your CPU heatsink fan. Again, below this is our M SATA connector, and that is for a mini SATA drive and I'm going to show you guys a picture of that just so you can figure out what it is but basically it's a really tiny SSD that you can mount right there on the motherboard itself and then you can set that up with Intel's smart response technology which is enabled by the Z68 chipset uh, so you can set that SSD to cache for your mechanical hard drive greatly improves the hard drive performance. Uh, lastly up here on the left upper left we have our VRM area with the gray heat sink above it uh, we have one more system fan header, and then finally we have our 8-pin EPS supplemental CPU power connector uh, that you want to route another power plug over from your power supply for. And finally, let's move on to our input outputs on the back of the motherboard. Uh, all of these red ports that you see are I'm sorry, USB 2 ports, uh, and they all support uh, additional power output for your USB 2.0 ports that will help you charge your devices up to 40% faster. Uh, below those two ports, we see a green and purple PS2 port. That's for a mouse or keyboard. Next to that is an optical port uh, for high-definition audio out. That's for a Toslink cable. Right up here, we have a FireWire port, uh, four more USB 2.0 ports, 
right here is the HDMI port you can use for video out. And that is if you're going to be using the integrated GPU on your Sandy Bridge processor. And uh, again, you can use the Virtue software by Lucid Logix in order to uh, enable both of those and switching back and forth between them. Uh, we have a couple more USB 3.0 ports here that are uh, blue coded, so you can tell they're USB 3.0. We have a gigabit LAN port right here up top. We have two more USB 2.0 ports. And finally, we have our audio ports here for audio outs. That's a Realtek ALC889 codec. Sports High Definition Audio 7.1 Channel Audio Out and Dolby Home Theater Support. And that's going to wrap it up for today's video. This has been the Gigabyte Z68 XP UD3 motherboard featuring the Intel 1155 socket and Z68 chipset. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed today's video and want to see more just like it, head over to our Newegg YouTube channel and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and we will see you next time.